Howdy, howdy, and welcome back to Gale FFTCG. I'm Corbin, your host, and today we need to talk about the competitive FFTCG scene. So why do we need to talk about it? The last time I did one of these videos, I think that the meta was in a really, really hard place. Um, it wasn't doing so hot. Um, and a lot of other creators at the time also seemed to think so. And so with our voice finally being put together, um, they it resulted in a Masha reban. Uh, maybe they planned to do it before, but I like to think that we had a hand in that. But that being said, I am so excited to talk about this in a positive light. But the reason I thought I would was I um, recently saw a comment somewhere. Um, it wasn't particularly important where, but it was just saying that the meta is very stale. And that is really not true. It's in a great place. In fact, we're probably in the best place we've been in a long time. There is a massive variety of meta um, that's being played. The depth, the amount of strategies that we're seeing top major events the world over, um, specifically the Materia Cups that have been happening in Europe. That's kind of my local scene, um, at least in terms of where I am and where I can easily get to events and tournaments. It's a good time. It's so much fun. In fact, um, I would argue the game is probably at the best it's maybe ever been. There's so many great options, so many different play styles, and so many different strategies. And while we're not going to necessarily look at all of them um, and eat and go list for list and stuff, we're going to definitely be looking at some of the more popular decks to see what we can kind of figure out about our meta and where we're sitting. So let's first take a look at Materia Cup Cardiff, um, which is quite a recent tournament. Um, for at least um, that's very close to home. I was not able to attend, but a lot of the members of the YYT, kind of my local play group and things, got a chance to go. And um, one of our members, Stephen Brocky, actually won the event. Um, I will put a link down in the description below for um, the YYT's video um, where Brocky talks about the entire deck and kind of his matchups and things. We're not here to talk about that. That video talks for itself, and it's a great time. But I thought it would be really cool if we looked at the decks that were present um, in there. Um, the winning list is a soiree list, um, the Fancy Party Fiesta list. Um, I've played against it. It's really strong. It's super cool. Love it to death. Um, it's one of the ones I I think right now, as the, if we're talking about the meta being positioned in such a great way, um, soirees being an actually fun deck to play. Uh, I remember the first time I played Soirees being a bit a bit jaded by the concept of, oh, this is an every deck, and, you know, it's really hard to interact with, blah, 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 blah. But the game has enough cards since that time to actually make it really fun. Um, it's probably the best shell for a new player to play and a competitive player to enjoy, um, at least in my opinion. But it is also just fun. Like, I remember playing games with this recently and just going, wow, this deck is just actually genuinely quite a bit of fun to play. And that, sometimes you just, yeah, you don't, you know a game is good when even the best deck is genuinely just fun. Um, the other list that is similar to this, but is a little bit more combo orientated um, is the Ice Fire FF6. Um, I also know James Kitty, the player who um, came second at that tournament. Um, cool guy, really, um, really enjoy the decks that he plays. Um, that list is also very fun. Um, I actually have both of those lists. Um, the Hyrule FF6 deck is super cool if you are an all-in kind of player. I'm not, personally. Um, but I enjoy it, uh, nonetheless. I think it's a lot of fun, and you can really get a good time out of it. Um, Wind, coming third. Not a big surprise, but again, Wind is not the best overall deck. It's not like, oh, well, another Wind deck just won it. There's a lot of scope and variety. It doesn't feel like Wind is stuck in the place that it used to be where, oh, I'm playing a mono Wind deck, so I'm probably going to win the tournament. Um, soirees, 
and um, FF6 as well, I think, can kind of go against those. I'm not 100% sure what the matchup is. Um, some of my other buddies could probably tell me a little bit better. We do have Mono Water here, and there's an Ice Lightning as well. Um, we have um, Gisa in the top 16 as well. Um, sorry, Magisa. Mm -hmm. um, we have Earth and Lightning. Basically, we just, like, looking at this, there's so many different colors here, so many d interesting sort of things. Um, the cards, um, Earth is really showing off its um, ability to accommodate a lot of different decks with what it can do. This is, this is what you want. You have a good support element that's also doing a lot of the heavy lifting in a meta. Um, and honestly, one of the things I really love is there are no loop decks in this particular top 16 anyway. Um, there hasn't really been a good loop deck for a while. Uh, maybe there's one kicking about that I'm not quite sure on, but there's just so much variety here. And having come from Magic the Gathering as one of my card game playing backgrounds, I am very, very um, aware that like loops in games can be really easy to, um, to build in, and they seem cool, but they're really not. And FF has done a pretty good job overall. There's been a couple of loop decks and stuff, but overall has been really good at not doing that. They, they make sure that they, any loops that could exist get locked out of the game. That's why Guido got a ban, because it was like this weird infinite loop that you could do with it that would just wipe your opponent's board forever. Um, but yeah. I just wanted to also point out that this is not the only thing. It's not just the um, UK meta that is very diverse. We also have the Materia Cup um, in Kansas. Um, this one is a little, seems a little bit more homogenized, um, but not by much. There's um, a Suarez list in top um, here, and there's um, actually um, category 13, which didn't even manage to top any um, for the Cardiff event, but it's just really interesting to see that. There's a couple of other... Um, you know, soiree lists, some water kicking about in here, monsters FF6, a lot of these, but the, like, the main thing, like, there's even earth water and stuff in here, the main thing is that you have so many different decks, that it's not all one element or all of another, you can see, like, the reported deck statistics just by elements alone, so many different elements, it's like an actual rainbow, it's so nice to see this. Right now, our game is in the best spot it's ever been, and that's simply because of the variety. The card pool is getting deeper, people are getting more innovative. And with that, I want to go on to one tiny point, and I'm just gonna, just gonna leave it as it is. If you want to complain about the meta, then figure out the solutions to counter the meta first. If you want to play casual, but want to play powerfully casual, then figure out what casual cards, quote-unquote, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the meta. Figure out if you need removal, all of that sort of stuff. Those who innovate are the ones who shift and empower the meta. That, just a little food for thought. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great rest of your week.